Hi there, welcome to the New E-Tech People podcast. Today is a very exciting day as I'm interviewing my first guest and it makes perfect sense to me to um, invite on the podcast one of my very first clients in technology. I've worked with this lady for nearly nine years, helping her with the attraction and retention of talent in the Newcastle market. So while James will continue to focus on interviewing tech talent on the Newy Tech People podcast, I wanted to bring sort of more diversity. So if you think about sort of technology being the engine or the solution um, that a company provides, there's lots of other people that make up that business that help that sort of engine run. So I'm really pleased to invite uh, my first guest on the podcast, someone I've known for about nine years and worked for, and I've watched her career grow as her company grew. So I'd like to welcome Prue Killick, Head of People and Culture at Pegasus. <laughs> Thanks, welcome. Linda. Thank, thank you. Welcome. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> So um, for those people that don't know you, mm -hmm. can you give us a brief overview of who you are, your career to date and how your career has progressed with Pegasus? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so in 2004, I started in recruitment. Uh, I worked in the Hunter Valley and through Sydney. Uh, we had a federal funding grant, which basically helped us assist as a private agency, helped assist uh, youth uh, come through and find education and then find apprenticeships and traineeships. So we worked across multiple sectors, across all industry types, big, small, medium-sized businesses and, yeah. and helped with that uh, engagement. So that was really exciting. That led me into uh, Indigenous work. Uh, agency work. I never knew that about you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I, in Sydney, I was our Indigenous consultant and worked with the Aboriginal Employment Strategy and local uh, youth at risk venues to be able to identify passions, look at how we could link that to education and then how we could link that into employment, uh, which was a really successful program. And it was um, a really, I loved, I loved that work. Mm -hmm. I came back to the Hunter uh, when my husband and I started a family and uh, I was actually on maternity leave when the role at Pegasus came up and I was like, ah, let's go. Yeah. Uh, and applied for the role because I wanted to bring all of that commercial understanding, all of that ability to start initiatives and strategies with, with clients. I wanted to be able to do that for an internal business and see those things all the way through to the end. So I uh, definitely saw the opportunity with Pegasus. I came into the HR uh, side. Mm -hmm. I then, um, took over the the uh, management of our RTO. Uh, and then for two years, I helped run our operation side of the business, our um, inbound call center. and Yeah, because Pegasus wasn't purely a technology company back then. No, that's right. So originally when I started, we were mostly uh, uh, labor hire services. Uh, and that was a huge part of our business. We had surveying and drafting, and then obviously our technology as well in on-site. It was definitely something that Adam and Phil, the owners, uh, saw the potential of the product and what it could do and the amount of industries that this product could go across into. So I came in at right at the start of that evolution, which was amazing. It gave us huge opportunities huge opportunities and um yeah we just saw the product go from strength to strength we have uh sold off the labor hire division and sold off the other parts of the business just to be the sole aspect of software and who was the first who was one of the question one of the people that first started writing that product phil charlie who is still a developer with us today Isn't that amazing <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. And it was it was just one problem for one client. You know, the problem for the client was they needed to track their contractors at site. And they said, can you guys do it? And in true Pegasus fashion, we can do anything. Let's say yes and figure it out. So we did exactly that. Yeah. Uh, and it was, yeah, uh, the, obviously understanding what the compliance needs were, uh, what the workforce trends were, all of those things to help the client manage that better. Mm -hmm. So that, that workforce management solution just yeah. continued to grow. Because lots of clients, I remember a lot of them, a lot of large companies were managing that through Excel spreadsheets, which Absolutely. opened those companies up to huge 
risk? Yeah, definitely. And I think it's it's the the amount of time and effort that takes to try and control that. The beauty of the system with us is that you can centralize all of that information for the client, but also standardize all of those protocols to get to site. So someone uh, like a Yankol or a Visi or a Lendlease can mandate from the very top level what their needs are for compliance and what their workforce needs are. And then site can have differences, which is fine, but it all meets that overall objective and the system manages all of that including access control and all sorts of things. Fantastic so and when you think about obviously I've seen the evolution of Pegasus over Mm. the last nine years I've been working with you guys and have placed a lot of those developers in your software team particularly so I've seen you grow quite steadily over that period and attract some really big clients and and sort of start moving into other markets across the world so can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So again, so as the product obviously was continuing to develop and we moved into more sectors that had a few differences and we needed to evolve the product, obviously the talent that comes with that to to enable that to happen uh, was exciting. So from being able to do it really well locally, obviously across Australia, we've been able to have really strong inroads into other countries. You know, we've we've got New Zealand um, pumping along now with Lion, who's who's just come it's on exciting. board. Yes, it's very exciting. Everyone wants that gig. Everyone wants I to go to the, the guys brewer. in the office are really <laughs> proud of that client. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, I'll go, I'll go to the brewery company. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's it's enabling that, um, again, to show the power of the product and how it is able to do this no matter where you are in the world, you're able to bring these same standard practices into any workforce anywhere. And that's helped with those links in the UK and the US more and more. So, yeah, we're, we've got a big uh, trajectory, so oh. <laughs> we're excited. So some really exciting news for Newcastle and Pegasus. Um, Pegasus is probably the biggest, one of the biggest product companies in Newcastle and you've been fortunate enough to secure investment from Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit more about that and sort of Pegasus's plans? I know you want to try and keep as many people local to Newcastle as you can and build, you know, help build the technology community here. So can you talk a bit about that? Yeah. So through the connections of our chairman of our board, Craig Jones, uh, he worked with Adam uh, extensively across the globe and made many connections. Through those connections, we were able to be introduced to AKKR, who are a private equity uh, investment firm. The really unique thing about that group uh, is that they invest only in tech companies. So their whole portfolio is made up of uh, tech innovators in niche areas that are specialists in those zones. Mm-hmm. Uh The other part I think that's been really encouraging is that connection of our values. You can really understand what they're trying to achieve as an equity firm and what they're trying to give back to those that invest. And that really aligns with us. It's that quality and integrity and, and, you know, that delivery and that sense of community that really Mm -hmm. connects. Um, And it's been fantastic. So it'll be uh, at the end of this year, it'll mark one year of investment for us. Wow, that's gone quickly. Yeah, it's gone really quick, especially in this this sort of environment of COVID and all of that. Pretty much riding this year year off. Exactly. It's um, so it's been really great. We've been able to really network with their contacts and and they've been able to support us and and give us inroads to connections in whatever area we're working, whether you're in the sales team, HR, myself, I'm part of the HR forum and uh, we have uh, bi-monthly meetings where all the HR leaders get on to a oh, webinar awesome. and yeah. they have different topics and um, you share information. So when COVID was was first happening for the whole world, I think that was the oh. that was the thing where everyone was like, this is happening to everyone, everyone uh, wants, and everyone yeah. was trying to react in the best way they could. So being able to be part of that community where other HR leaders were saying, this is what we've done. Have you guys done anything else? This is some templates. This is what we're doing. Uh, can you give us suggestions? And it was this, this amazing community of information that everyone was able to leverage for, for the better, for the better of the group. Yeah, that's fantastic. And it sounds like that was perfect timing for you to be able to have those connections and amazing and support yeah. as well. And, yeah. you know, completely understand the values driven thing in terms of, you know, having partnerships that share the same values. It just makes business so much more pleasurable and enjoyable. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's been exciting because it's given us the opportunity to, uh, we did our first M&A with Compliance Fox, which was really, really exciting yeah, for us. Yeah, how did that go? It was amazing. The um, the team that have come over from Compliance Fox had 
just engaged and excited and motivated. Uh, the platform is great. It, it meshes in with our platform amazingly. It offers a whole new suite of services uh, and it really enables that that piece to grow for us as well. So it's it's those advantages and, and the investment has allowed us to be able to look at how we can be more strategic in those aspects and and offer those those solutions. Hmm. So will Compliance Fox be sort of um, targeting a, a different market? So, you, you know, Pegasus has got very, very large enterprise blue chip mm-hmm. client base. Is Compliance Fox going to be targeting a smaller size business or what's the strategy around? Yes. Yeah, so their their uh, offering is really suitable for the contractor base. So although we have enterprise, the enterprise end of the market, I guess, with with clients and being able to work with the client down, this compliance fox allows the contractor to manage their own group as well, rather okay. than purchasing the big the bigger on site product. Uh, they can go through workforce, which is an abridged version, allows them the same sort of capacity, and they can manage any documents they need to and then link the ones they need for Pegasus. They can link through to us, uh, but it enables the contractor to have more control over whatever they've got to manage, whatever their workflow structure looks like for them. They can manage that at that level. Excellent. Mm. Good. It's very exciting. So um, very exciting for Pegasus. I'm really excited for you guys. And so obviously really exciting for Newcastle as well. And it'd be great to then, I guess, give the audience a bit of insight into the culture at Pegasus and what it's like to work there. Yeah, for sure. We always seem to attract like-minded people uh, in the sense that everyone's very driven. We all have very varied skills, um, but we all have passion for our own vocation. So it doesn't matter if you're in tech, you're in marketing, you're in sales, you're in account management, you're in the call center, customer success, HR. We all have our own passions and we all have our own drivers to help deliver our business strategy yep. and it's that respect we have for each other knowing that we all come from different objectives however we've got the one objective obviously as part of that business strategy so it's you know egos don't last long it's uh we celebrate the wins we support each other through the bad you know decisions potentially yeah. um or the mistakes that have you know that pop up from time to time uh but we have a good sense of humor about it as well so you know we even have an award an annual award award uh, which celebrates the biggest stuff up for the 12 months <laughs> I love it <laughs> so yes. that's, it always brings it back to the humor <laughs> of the humor of the situation yeah you've but got to laugh and move on exactly you know I think otherwise yeah. if you stay in that place where you feel like you failed then you're not not learning yeah and it's you know it's it's that fail fast mentality of let's get in let's understand it let's you know reiterate these things and and not just have a a massive failure at an end point but being able to go okay let's adjust let's adjust and and keep it moving so everyone uh understands that in the business and we all understand you know how we need to move and pivot at times but at the end of the day, we understand what the overall objective is and everyone can contribute to that outcome. Exactly. So that's it's not just that's the, power it's not the technical guys that, you know, obviously tech is the engine or the solution that you provide to your customers, but there's so many other business functions that actually enable that to happen. Absolutely. And, you know, your area of HR and talent is really critical because for businesses to have a competitive advantage, you need to be able to attract and retain the best talent. Yes. So I guess that was one of my next questions around sort of, you know, what initiatives are you looking at to firstly attract and retain, but also sort of engage talent through the recruitment and onboarding process? Yeah. So uh, we've been fortunate to connect with the Newcastle University and be able to work on some really significant projects for us around artificial intelligence. So that will see a group of our uh, tech team and a group of uh, the university's tech team work together on some of those initiatives that, you know, working on something that's exciting, that's, you know, pioneering, uh, all of those types of things help retain, obviously, our, our amazing talent that we have at Pegasus. Uh-huh. Uh, but there's other things where we we know we have to contribute to the local community when it comes to talent engagement from a very young age as well. So we engage with MEGT for Cert 3 ICT traineeships. So we've got five trainees at the moment. So Excellent. Yeah, it's it's one of those, I think there's a stigma 
stigma still around that as well when it comes to um, trainees in the workplace. And and although we can have a good balance of graduates coming out of university, you know, three of them had three of the trainees had completed semesters of university and and were missing that hands on component that really. Oh. That they were passionate and, about and traineeships yeah. can give you, yeah, yeah. So we were able to bring them in. They've been on the job uh, and working through on the job with us, which has been fantastic. And they they're really thriving in the environment. They've got the technical know how. They understand the customer component of what a software as a service platform needs to produce and, and needs to provide. Um, so that's been really really beneficial. So we'll definitely continue with that program. That's uh, excellent, and yeah. that's that's quite a large number of trainees for a company your size yeah so that's a great effort it's in, yeah. it's really important to us i think you know we have to contribute to both ends of the talent spectrum you can't just all have you can't hog all the good stuff right at the top <laughs> you've, you've got to be able to bring people along yeah. on that journey and, yeah. and engage um and and build up through you know and we're, we're unique i think in the we own and develop our own software we have everything in-house from sales through to marketing through to bi ba QA, all all of the components that makes the software cycle. So, uh, and and the sales to service cycle. So there's opportunities when you come in and start with us to really go. I I get what you do here, and I like what that person does, and I'd like to do more of what they do. So with our traineeships, we do tours of duty, and and they get pockets of time in different teams to understand what it is that those tech pockets are, yeah, and then decide if that's what they like, if they don't like it we're not offended, like it's okay. Yeah, and I think it's it's good for them to have a holistic view of a company and its mm-hmm. operations as well. It's really yeah. stands them in good stead when they're, you know, applying for future yeah. positions. Yeah, definitely. Another program that we're engaged in is the HSC Smart Track, and that program has been uh, – enabling there's a new process i guess for the hsc smart track students which is what would have been considered maybe the old work experience and tafe day yeah uh, they've remodeled it a little bit more um, and it enables an employer to have a student for longer periods of time throughout the week uh, rather than maybe a block period or one day a week and you're getting students that have that have really thought and committed to their vocational training. So we have a young guy called Jordan who's studying aviation and he's coming to our tech support team and is helping with hardware and yeah. all sorts of things. So this there. is in year 11 that they start? Yes, yep. year 11 and 12. They It's an alternative, uh, I guess, end for the HSC. That's fantastic. Yeah. And then we've got two young students from the media and production team that are coming in to do a little bit of uh, a bio on Jordan and a bio on Pegasus and use that as support material for the HSC Smart Track program moving forward that the school can use and we can help promote. Yeah. But they're, they're so enthusiastic. They're so engaged yeah. and it's, they really want to you know, have that opportunity. The yeah. beauty of the subjects, I guess, that are, that are being offered is there's lots of, you know, not just Pegasus, there's lots of recruiters, there's lots of employment uh, opportunities in Newcastle. And I think if if businesses leaned into it a little bit more and could see that supporting this these types of programs early can really help with that long-term, you know, talent pipeline mm. and understand, you know, let's give these students a really great experience in these vocations so that they're passionate and they're engaged and they want to can keep contributing locally and and in the local market yeah fantastic well, that's a great initiative mm-hmm. so pegasus has always had fairly good retention especially i guess what i know of in the technology team yes. there's people that i've placed in that team probably eight years ago that yes. are still there <laughs> so tell me about some of the initiatives that you're working on to sort of foster that sort of engagement and retention throughout the employment life cycle yeah, definitely. There's there's a whole range of activities that that happen because of our pace of our product and our uh, definitely the new features and the new aspects of the product keep the we keep current tech and the innovation projects are really exciting. So yep. our developers really enjoy that engagement piece of where is the product going and what can they do to support that, but also what uh, how can it be better? So being able to bring an offering to say, well, if it worked this way or if we kept it in this sequence, then this is the benefits that can come out from the other side. So that's been really exciting. Uh, we have a very strong relationship with our clients. Uh, so they actually come in and they can see through UAT testing, the devs can be in the room and actually see the reaction and the engagement from a client that 
it solves a real life problem for them. They solve yeah. something critical to their business uh, and the benefits are immense. So being able to have that engagement and for them to see what the product actually does in the real world, uh, I think that's really beneficial as well and keeps that that inspiration high. Uh, and being able to look at new markets in international markets and, and the differences that those and the different challenges that's going to bring has also kept that engagement really high, which is exciting. Yeah, fantastic. I know it's definitely helped me talk about those things when I've helped you recruit in the past in terms of the growth and, you know, the new tech that the the guys are getting mm. to experiment with and play with and new markets that you're going into. It certainly makes it more attractive to new talent coming in the orga- into the organisation as well. Yeah, for sure. You mentioned sort of you touched on a bit of innovation days and you potentially hackathons that maybe yeah. get so the guys involved in in the future. Yeah, definitely. So we're looking at this year was kind of a, <laughs> the aim was this year. <laughs> it kind of went skew F as, yeah. as most things did this in 2020. Uh, but it's definitely something we're looking at for 2021. So being uh, either engaging with a group that are, are looking to to have that offering and potentially link in as mentors or or engage that way, but also looking at how we could uh, potentially get a, a real life problem with a group that we're passionate about and understand, you know, how we can connect and, and be able to solve a problem through a tech solution, uh, yeah, with a hackathon and, and get students involved. And, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, so it's in the planning works. Yeah, fantastic. I think um, there's been a few done in this region, but obviously COVID has stopped a lot of that activity. Yes. Um, but I know there's there's a few people that are wanting to put together some new tech events in Newcastle. So yeah, hopefully yeah. 2021 20, will be... With any luck. (laughs) Yeah. So in terms of, um, you know, obviously you sort of having a career in technology and, you know, sort of building, uh, building um, Pegasus in the, in the local market, what advice would you give to students wanting to start a career in technology? What do you like to see? Yeah. When you meet these young grads, what kind of attributes and, you know, sort of personality traits are you looking for? Yeah, I think for us, it's it's always it's always attitude over aptitude. I'm sure everyone says that, uh, but it's that 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 fit of that continued wanting to learn, that ability to understand that one solution isn't going to fit all, and that there needs to be multiple people involved. And and how do you collaborate? So those collaboration skills are really important, mm. and being able to to hear others and acknowledge others <laughs> is definitely <laughs> part of it. Uh, but it, it's it's that ability to to keep moving against those objectives. So I think it's just a, a flair and a passion for their for their field and what they want to do and being able to understand that they contribute to a, a bigger solution and uh, they, they contribute to a bigger strategy. So it's that ability to listen and be heard and, mm. and understand what you can contribute and and keep keep momentum on on certain projects and objectives and uh it, that that shines through with with a lot of people and good and i think i think it's important to see that you're choosing people based on different education pathways because it's not just universities the be all and end all anymore like it yeah. was you know certainly when i started recruiting in technology mm-hmm. software engineers had to have a university degree and i know that that's the preferred but there have also a lot of talented software engineers and IT people that have chosen TAFE pathways or other higher learning yeah, courses. Yeah. So that's really, really yeah. good. The, that that passion for continued learning, that ability to go, I'm never going to be done because the minute you're done, you're obsolete. Yes. <laughs> so and, it's- yeah, and it's, um, I think, you know, you certainly don't need to be changing careers every two years to stay current, but it's no. that... Um, I guess, pride and personal accountability in your own learning and, you know, trying new technologies and new ways of working Mm -hmm. that, you know, we'll see those people employed yeah always yeah absolutely and even if they start out in a particular area and they discover through working that they actually have a stronger trait towards something else they have a stronger interest in something else being able to continue to learn towards that as well and and the the opportunities for career pathways and they can say i okay i want to talk to our scrum master brooke and i want to understand how she moved from our safety manager through to into this role so Mm you know, being able to understand what those tracks look like and, and what were the education milestones that helped achieve that because anyone can move anywhere, um, but they have to have the the guts to do it. 
<laughs> they have to have the initiative, right? Mm. It's um, you can't you can't do everything for everyone. And part of a, a well humming team is that everyone takes accountability for what they're responsible for, mm. and that's that's the ability to really perform. Yeah, and something that you know I've always been really passionate about is bringing more talent to our beautiful city, Newcastle. Yes. Um, so during this time, obviously, it's forced everyone to sort of consider more remote working options. Absolutely. How have you been onboarding people during COVID and during isolation? I know you've hired a couple of people yes. during that time. <laughs> Tell us about that experience of, you know, having everyone in the office and then suddenly having to set everyone up at home. Yes. So uh, when it was all starting to become very hectic and in the news, you could tell that it was not going to be long before we moved into into lockdown. This was early March. Uh, we had a manager's meeting Sunday afternoon and we made the call as a group that we were going to go early and that we were going to get all the staff that we could home the following day. So we met with staff. We were able to get 50% of our workforce home in the, in the first day. Uh, we That's had- amazing. We, our challenge became. <laughs> so that's at least what, 50 people? How yeah. many people have you yeah. got now? Yeah, so we had, uh, so we've got just about just over 90. So here, based here in Newcastle. Uh, so yeah, we had 50%, we were able to send straight away our. Our challenge was our, our contact centre who was still working off desktops um, and our phones through our VPN and all of those types of things. So we took the initiative to separate all of them across three floors since we had the space since everyone else was gone. Uh, they had to use the online tools and technology over that week and, and work out any kinks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we, uh, a bunch of us pulled our cars into the car park. We piled monitors, desktops, <laughs> chairs. We bought Newcastle out of ether cable. Oh my God, and it sounds hectic. It was very, <laughs> it was an intense few days. <laughs> uh, and we, yeah, and we basically drove to people's houses, set them up where they needed to be set up, uh, made sure everyone was online fine. And so by the end of the week, we'd had hundred percent work from home. Wow. So, that's a great that achievement. <laughs> it, was, it was so impressive to see. And I think the goodwill that we we built with our staff enabled those challenges and kinks to work themselves out. Everyone yeah. took a level of understanding and everyone was willing to help and, un, you know, get everything all, all sorted. So, uh, and then we just leveraged all of the tools. So we, we, we leaned in hard to Microsoft Teams and, yes. uh, and then obviously our own technology and, and being able to, to use that to continue to have no impact to the, to our clients. So that was, that was the biggest success factor that clients didn't realize we'd converted all of our staff to work from home. They didn't, they didn't see any of that, which was just And great. what was it like onboarding brand new people? Yes. What did you have to change about your processes? Yes. So we brought on two devs. Uh, it was like the week after this had occurred. Uh, so it was virtual onboarding in the first instance. But again, it was that ability to go, here's my new challenge team. Uh, uh, Jake and Brooke were able to take it back to the team and go, look, we've got new starters. This is what we need. Uh, and they divide and conquered. So they understood what the training plan needed to look like, what engagement they needed, and were able to coordinate that so that we could get these guys up and running and, and working on some hmm. on some items really Feeling quickly. Feeling welcome and yeah, part yeah. of the team. See, yeah, see a few different people. Everyone had square heads for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> I know there was definitely a lot of Zoom fatigue going on at that time. I, it wasn't my favourite time. I learnt that I thought I could do this working from home thing. I quite, quite like it and then you know, throwing homeschooling into the mix and, yeah. What a, what it, yes. Not yes. fun. Well, I think part of it was also we all understand, a lot of us at Pegasus have children mm -hmm. at school age, varying ages from from toddlers right through to, to high school. Uh, we all understood that everyone was under this immense pressure <laughs> to try and get this to work. Um, but we gave each other permission to go, look, if your kid comes in the screen, like we would have afternoon catch-ups and my kids would be saying hi to other kids on the the back of other yeah. people's videos and it was it was good it was that attitude of going look we we have to we're going to get through it we need to do it with a sense of humor and reality I know it just <laughs> I remember through. saying um I say, said to my son's tutor I said can you please dial in via zoom and just take maths 
way off my hands. Yes. I'll do everything else. <laughs> but maths, I don't have enough wine. Yes. To get oh my to gosh. That's maths it. Maths lessons. So yeah. just you do that and I'll do everything else. Yes, it's so true. So we we had um we knew that we had certain meetings that we needed kids to be distracted. So we started Peg Pal Kids. So each day we would send out a challenge which was like that's scavenger amazing. hunt outside. Ah. <laughs> That's amazing. Send them on their way. Uh, Colouring in competitions because it was all over Easter as well. Yes. So it was just, you know, everyone had planned to go away. And so, yeah, so just trying to obviously understand the family factor that's associated with it as well. So, yeah, that yeah, was good. Yeah, because it was already a, a sort of stressful time. So yeah, having to, you know, give that level of support to your staff I think is really important during that time. It was such an unusual yeah. thing. Yeah. A lot of people can't handle being at home absolutely and it was not only were you at home that you had no other social outlet as well yes. so those that would have been part of the footy club or the cricket club yeah. or had been you know would meet up we, you know we have drinks on a thursday or you know whatever it might be from from that working brown all of that stopped it came to a crushing halt really really quickly mm. so mm. it was important to know uh who we should check in on and and how we could try and stay connected as possible and mm. damien our our senior trainer was fantastic he had trivia zoom trivia <laughs> oh, we had oh my gosh it was so yeah. great he did such a good job so it was a friday drinks and everyone had log in and we'd all do trivia and oh, all of that nice. kind of stuff which was fun yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did really well. Well, sounds like he handled it really well. We've 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 all come out of it the other side, which is that's the success factor, isn't it? So we've all come out of it. Everyone's engaged and and still really engaged in their work and their and their and their jobs and their tasks. So mm. um, and we've kept that balance. So for those that we can continue to have, probably that we're in the office full time, uh, but can obviously see the benefits of having a few days out of the office to to focus and concentrate. Um, that's been able to be maintained. So yep. we've got that full flex aspect now um, through the whole through the whole group. Yeah, I think that's really key and that's, you know, something that a lot of organisations and a lot of my larger clients, mm -hmm. they just can't bring 800 people back into the office. Yeah. It's just impossible yeah. to maintain that distance and, um, you know, keep everyone sort of separated and it's good to see that a lot of companies are really respecting that and respecting the health of their yeah. staff and and doing the right thing yeah exactly there's lots of underlining um anxieties that people feel about that as well so exactly. being able just to just take that worry away is enables that performance to maintain doesn't it so it's yeah. that you know it's it's not that I don't know if people or employees were, have been scared of the productivity dropping or we saw a, a rise in productivity we saw yes really deliberate meetings, really clear actions. Uh, everyone was really focused on what had to be delivered. Uh, communication was great because you just got the stakeholders you needed. It was it was a good experience in a terrible time. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be a nine to five working day anymore unless you're going to be missing key meetings. But if someone wants to start earlier and still getting their work done and finish earlier, then, you know. Yeah. Adapt the harm in adapt that? and mould. Yes, yes, absolutely. Exactly. So let's talk about you mm -hmm. and what you like to do in your spare time. Oh gosh, spare time. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> So you've obviously got a young family as well. So, I do. I have yeah. a I have a ten and an eight year old who are coming to the end of netball season first time. That's been an experience, uh, but good. Have you done canteen duty in the, at the netball? No, yet? I missed it. You don't want to. <laughs> I it. That was the <laughs> my. Um, uh, my husband's parents and my parents wanted to take the girls like one time each because you can't have yeah. guests come. You can only have one person per kid aspect and so it was the week that my mum took them was meant to be canteen volunteering so I got out of it <laughs> good because it's not a nice experience let me tell you I got told off for using the wrong shaped bread roll with the roast beef oh no um, should have used the long bread roll instead of the round <laughs> bread roll so I got humiliated in front of about 50 parents at oh Nepal. gosh so yes I wasn't happy yeah <laughs> that's it right <laughs> It's the oddest thing. Just dodge it's it. the oddest thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 They've been, I would have to say, Netball uh, New South Wales has been one of the most COVID strict I've ever 
yeah. come across. They did such a great job to have the season happen. So, uh, yeah, so we've so the girls just come through netball. They do dancing, you know, swimming's about to start again, all of those types of things. But uh, for me, I, I really like to read. I love a good documentary. Yeah. So what kind of books do you read? Uh, I read all sorts of books. At the moment I'm reading some tech books. So I'm reading Brotopia by Emily Chung at the moment, which is, yeah, which is a really great one about um, Silicon Valley and, and certain stereotypes and those types of things, which mm. has been really interesting to read. You have to tell me about that one. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a fantastic book. Um, but all, all sorts of things. I like uh, a lot of biographies, but also uh, business and commercial type aspects as well. I have an Instagram blog called The HR Equation, which is... Do you? Yes, which I do when I research certain things and I find interesting tidbits about uh, HR frameworks, initiatives, all of those types of things, I just post them up. I'll which have is, to follow you. Yeah, the HR, yeah, the HR Equation it's called. And I'm an, uh, a member of the Hunter Valley Boutique Collective. So it's a great group in the Valley that... Um, uh, it's not exclusively women by any means, but there are a lot of women that go to it. Uh, lots of professionals, business owners that are just seeking support and engagement. So there's a topic every month that varies from all sorts of things, from marketing. Um, uh, I did a, a leadership and culture one at last month. Yep. Uh, so yeah, all sorts of aspects, and it's a, it's an amazing group of inspiring people that just support each other and help with different engagement pieces. So that's that's been really exciting to be a part of as well. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And do you listen to any podcasts? So I, I always recommend uh, Unfuck Your Brain by Carla Lom Lowenthal, is that yeah. how you say her name? It used to be called the, the Lawyer's Stress Solution, but her whole podcast is about understanding your response to certain situations and what your body's doing and how it's reacting and being able to give you a different, uh, different tools to, I guess, understand what's happening in that emotion in that moment right. and being able to have a good skill set coming out of it to acknowledge it for what it is and, and how you can react to it better. It's kind of like short circuiting that moment and turning it into more of a positive reaction then. Yeah, it's she's she's fascinating to listen to. Oh. Um, her back catalogue of the Lawyer Stress Solution, highly recommend. I'll have to listen to yeah, it. Yeah, and she's she's got some great techniques, so I, I really enjoy that. And we've got a LinkedIn learning subscription uh, through Pegasus, so have about a 50-minute trip into Newcastle from my home. So I have about two hours in the car each day. Uh, so I listen to a variety of, of different learnings in that as well. So over a day, I'll get about six or eight hours worth of mm. learning in as I travel to that's and from a, yeah, work. That's a really good way to do it. I yeah. Think. yeah. Yeah. And they've got heaps of audio only versions um, yeah, of we've everything. Got, we've got that as part of our recruiter subscription as well. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's it's um, it's great. We've, we've set up a few different uh, learning pathways at, at work with it as well, which has been great. Good. Mm. And what about, is there any business leaders or mentors you have that inspire you? Yeah. Look, there's probably, there's many, I would say. I've really enjoyed being part of the AKKR HR forum. Yeah. Uh, just being able to have that connection with these HR leaders uh, all over the world that are managing huge businesses, medium businesses, um, a whole range of things to see how they're adapting and changing has been really, really great. Um, and the the education they've offered out has been has been phenomenal as well. So I've really enjoyed following a bunch of a bunch of those lovely mm. ladies and gents. Mm. Uh, and you're reaching out to them when I've had more questions and, and that's been really great. And very early in my, my career I had a lovely lady called Diane McDougal who was um, a total boss when it came to anything and she was the one that was like get in there you know you can do anything she was amazing she came out to in she came out of semi retirement to help me in our sydney office when i needed more support for our wow. funded program so, nice so people that have a positive impact amazing. through your career that you still stay in touch with and, yeah, yeah definitely definitely very mm -hmm. good well i'm so stoked that you came on the podcast it was really insightful for our listeners to get an understanding of pegasus and the growth that you've achieved mm -hmm. and plans for the future and, you know, plans for your team as well and how you're keeping them engaged, you know, throughout this time. And yeah. Great. Well, thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. And I appreciate the hoodies. I'll yeah, pay yes. you with a new tech hoodie. <laughs> Where your Pegasus ones are around. It's like coming to summer, but it's okay. It's okay. Next winter, next I winter. Know. So thank you. Really appreciate it. Excellent. And I appreciate you being my first podcast. Yeah. Thank you very much. Great. Happy to be here. Thank you. <laughs>